What's up guys, Rogue9 here. In all of the previous videos, the light tank was always the second choice of which vehicle I should feature next, but no more. The time has come to give this plucky little vehicle the attention it deserves. So let's go! As with all vehicles in Battlefield 1, the FT-17 light tank comes in three variants. The light close support tank, the light flanker tank and the light howitzer tank. Compared to all other vehicles, even including the other tanks, the light tank is surprisingly slow. Its acceleration and turning speed are better than that of other tanks, but even the sluggish Mark V landship can outrun the light tanks at full speed. I have already spoken about the unique armor of the FT-17 in previous videos, so just as a quick reminder, the chassis has a standard light armor just like the assault and artillery trucks, the turret has medium armor and the tailplate at the back offers almost the same level of protection as the armor of the heavy tanks. And now over to the main armaments of the three light tanks. The close support variant sports a turret with a 37mm short barreled cannon and a coaxial light machine gun. The HE cannon is very similar to the HE cannons of the tanks that we have previously examined, except worse in every way. Six to seven shots to kill against heavy armor is bad to begin with, and what makes it even worse is that you will always need to reload after using your initial five shots, even if your opponent doesn't have an emergency repair. A minimum of 4 shots to take out light armor, 5 against another FT-17's turret and 6 against the tailplate is also nothing to write home about. Against infantry the picture is much of the same. A significantly lower muzzle velocity of 150 meters per second instead of the standard 222 meters per second makes it harder to land direct hits which deal only 150 points of damage instead of 180. The explosive blast damage stats you see here are against infantry without perks, with flak, with juggernaut and with both. At only 100 baseline points and a max radius of 4 meters, the 37mm HE gun is again significantly weaker than the HE guns on other tanks and anyone who is just running flak will already be able to survive a near miss. The coaxial LMG is decent against infantry at all ranges, but once again, the required 3 headshots and 5 to 7 body shots to kill make it just that little bit weaker than the HMGs you will find on almost all other vehicles. Over to the light flanker tank and its main gun is also mounted inside a rotating turret and is essentially the same 20mm autocannon used by the heavy breakthrough tank's passengers. The muzzle velocity of this gun is a little better at 160 meters per second and against heavy armor you will need at least 4 15 round bursts while light armor requires 2 bursts. Uh, the light tank turrets will require 3 and the tailplates 4 bursts. That's not great, but also not terrible and it makes sense given the flanker's role as an anti-infantry specialist. Against infantry, the explosive rounds of the 20mm cannon are surprisingly ineffective, requiring at least 4 direct hits and 5 or more misses within 2.5 meters. So if you're fighting infantry in the open, the 20mm canister shells might be the better choice. They fire 10 projectiles per shot, which up to a distance of 15 meters do 6 points of damage each, i.e. 2 shots to kill, and uniquely the damage per pellet of these shots actually increases with distance up to a maximum of 8 points of damage. This makes no sense of course from a real life point of view, but I'm guessing it is used for the in-game balancing to give the shells an acceptable reach. The game's code also lists a muzzle velocity of 450 meters per second, which makes the canister shells a great choice for picking off targets on the move. And last, but in my humble opinion, by no means least, we have the light howitzer variant. Featuring a fixed turret, a short 75mm howitzer cannon and a heavy machine gun. Getting to grips with this variant takes a little longer since the limited firing arc left to right for both weapons, the slow speed of the vehicle and the ridiculously slow muzzle velocity of only 100 meters per second for its 75 meter shells all take some getting used to. But once you get used to the limitations of this vehicle, you can truly let its strength shine. It may only have four cannon shots ready to go at any one time, but it only needs three of them to take out a heavy vehicle and two to destroy light armor. And because the shells do their damage not through penetration but sheer explosive concussion, it does not matter what angle you hit your opponents at, you will always do maximum damage no matter where your shots land. 
Against infantry, the gun is less useful despite its massive 350 points of blast damage. The low muzzle velocity and the extreme ballistic curve of these shells make it difficult to hit moving targets and the extreme damage drop-off starting at only 0.3 meters means that at around 3 meters, even infantry with no perks will already be able to survive the explosion. When fighting enemy infantry, the driver-controlled HMG is far more effective and it can be a great asset at engaging infantry at longer ranges. This gun is the same as the ones on all other vehicles three headshots and four to five body shots to kill. And as always, before I present you with my final evaluation of these three tank variants, let's just quickly run over the gadgets and special abilities they have. The close support variant has the track repair ability and can drop supplies for friendly or enemy infantry up to 10 meters away. The light flanker has the track repair and the standard AT mines, and the light howitzer has the emergency repair as well as a smoke generator. What is the difference between the track repair ability and the emergency repair ability? Well, the emergency repair can be triggered at any time and will refill around 10 hit points, while the track repair can only be triggered when your vehicle has become disabled, but it refills 20 hit points instead. So now the final conclusions. My absolute favorite light tank and one of my favorite vehicles full stop is the light howitzer tank. The surprise, then shock, then horror that you can instill in enemy tankers by blindsiding them with your stupidly powerful 75mm HE shells fills me with pure joy every time. Detonating entire buildings by putting one of these babies in through the window is equally amazing and so is using the HMG to keep enemy infantry at bay. The only vulnerability of this tank is the lack of a turret, the slow top speed and weak armor. Uh, I guess that's several vulnerabilities, plural. At close range, getting swarmed by assault players or flanked by another vehicle can be a death sentence and even the repair and smoke abilities may not be enough to save you. Also, if the opposing team has bombers or attack planes in the air, you may find yourself in a lot of trouble with little chance of defending yourself. The 75mm howitzer is not great for hitting planes and the HMG alone is just not enough to shoot down any of those pesky aircraft. The light flanker is also a great little tank. On infantry heavy maps, especially in hardcore mode, the 20mm autocannon can absolutely shred infantry using the canister shells in the open and HE shells to get at the troops in cover. If you manage to flank in behind enemy territory, see what I did there, dropping up to 6 AT mines in sneaky locations can also net you the odd kill while keeping the map clear of enemy armor. The flanker's rotating turret makes it less vulnerable in close quarters than the howitzer, but other vehicles and planes are still a danger to you. And last, and in this case also least, is the close support tank. Very much like the armored assault truck variant of the Putilov Garford, I feel that this tank tries to take a middle of the road approach where it neither excels against infantry nor against other tanks, and its supply drop only really makes sense if it pushes right up with friendly troops into positions where it is most vulnerable to counterattacks. Picking a vehicle that struggles to deal with enemy armor is a borderline sin in any match, but at least other vehicles like this, for example the light flanker tank and the armored reconnaissance truck, are great against infantry and still okay against armor. The close support tank is just pretty bad at dishing out damage against all targets while still being slow and having weak armor. My recommendation would be to just stay away from this variant, there are better vehicles to choose from no matter what map or game mode you are playing. But as always, this last part is just my opinion. What are your thoughts on the light tank in general and what is your favorite variant? Also, which tank or plane do you want me to cover next? Leave your comments below and while you are there, hit the like button if you liked the video, dislike if you didn't like it. Thank you so much to all of you who have supported all of my Battlefield 1 videos with your eyeballs. The popularity and community support for my BF1 work has just resulted in me receiving the Dice Friends Award and I want to say a special thank you to all of you who took the time to nominate me for this award and an extra special thank you to Rogue9 Discord member and budding Twitch streamer The Pickle Deliverer whose nomination for me is the one quoted in the Dice Awards list. And finally, before I wrap up, 
as some of you may already know, I am running a giveaway for the Rainbow Six Year 3 Season Pass and it has occurred to me that it's a little discriminatory. So if you have no interest in Rainbow Six but still want to take part, go right ahead, link in the description below and if you win, I will be more than happy to exchange the prize for something of equivalent value, like for instance the Battlefield 1 Season Pass. Anything you like. And with that guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode. With your stupidly powerful 75 meter HE shells, uh, yeah, 75 meters, of course. Can also, can also, <laughs> can also, yes, can also net you. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, mouth and brain.